Eyes Mr. New Mobile here. Seen some premium phones from LG, but as far as fancy names go the LG Velvets take the cake and bring some snazzy aesthetics and even some extra goodies in the box if you pre-order in certain markets. Please subscribe followed by the bell. You can also keep up on Facebook, Twitter, and you can purchase any Samsung Galaxy phones or Apple phones by clicking the links in the description, and if you love LG Velvets I will leave the link in the description. Besides that how much value is there? Here. Let's find out in our LG Velvets review the Velvet is a significant departure from the LG design language we used to as a sleek tall curved form factor, and a dazzling gradient finish ours is in the Aleutian sunset color, and is more like an explosion of different colors, depending on the angle of the light. The whole thing is quite mirror-like to any touch on the surface will be fewer smudges and fingerprints. One of the unique design features is Allergy's raindrop camera scheme where cameras are ranged from large to small to be more aesthetically pleasing. The back panel is made from Gorilla Glass, which curves into the glossy aluminum frame. The DV 6.8 inches, with a 1080p resolution. A standard refresh rate and L. 20.5x9 aspect ratio. It looks nice though. The U-shaped notch of the top for the selfie cam might be an eyesore for some people. The panel has good sharpness, as well as the black suit expect from enamel next brightness is in chart topping, but is decent around 400 nets of the manual slider in a little over 600 units in auto mode when the bright sun colors can be tweaked in settings, but none of the presets are too accurate to a specific color space is not too bad, but your whites are a bit on the bluish set is an optical fingerprint sensor under the display, and it does a pretty good job at recognizing you and unlocking the phone. It wasn't the most accurate for us in the beginning, but it seems to improve over time. The more you use it, and there's an always on display which will show the time and notifications is highly customizable. With lots of different clock styles and colors to choose from Yashi Velvet has a stereo speaker set up with one bottom firing speaker and the earpiece acting as a second one. He scored very good in our loudness test, and quality is nice and previous LG phone is 128 gigs of storage on board, which should be plenty. And if not, it is expandable through Micrist. In some markets, pre-orders of the LG Velvet will get you a bunch of extras, including a silicone case wireless headphones and LG's dual screen accessory, gives you an extra screen is pretty much the same as the main one for use and multitasking increase in functionality is balanced by the fact that is bulky and hides the phones. Nice design and increases battery consumption to what still adds a lot of value to the package. If you can get it for free. You can use app side by side open new browser tabs on the other screen, watch videos while you text, or even use one of the displays as a four screen keyboard for a full screen gamepad for support. Again the LG Velvet runs, allergies, user experience version 9 over Android 10 interface is clean and simple, with no complicated menus or custom set. You have the option for an app drawer, or you can choose to keep all of your apps on the home screen, I've used most of LG's flagship phones over the past few years. Enjoyed using them, even. But heck if I could pick them out of the lineup. LG has pursued an aggressively bland design language adopted in near identical fashion by virtually all of its recent phones. The G7, the V40, the G8, the V50, and so on are all fine devices on paper, but they're only distinguishable if you can remember their specific screen sizes and camera layouts, and even then it's a challenge. Whatever the reason for this, it's not working. LG is hanging on to its distant third place in the US, and it's a non-entity in many other major markets. And so now we have the Velvet, a phone that sees LG take completely the opposite approach to its typical idea of a flagship phone, abandoning the long-running G series altogether. It's an attempt for the company to be taken seriously as a design leader, as it was in the days of the iconic chocolate slider in the mid-aughts. LG even managed to restrain itself from including Think in the name. The Velvet is a mid-range phone with mid-range pricing, but unmistakably high-end fit and finish. After using the phone to date, or any other 5G phone out there. The question is what was sacrificed to achieve this. Would normally start a phone review by talking about its industrial design. It's not all that often that I use phones where the choice of the processor has a material impact on its user experience. In this case, though, LG's decision to go with the Qualcomm Snapdragon 765 and the slightly faster 765G in the US informs almost everything about the device. Just about every flagship Android phone you'll read about this year will use a Snapdragon 865 system on chip at its core. It's the fastest chip available to Android device manufacturers. But the problem with the 865 is that not only does it not have an integrated 5G modem, but Qualcomm also mandates that it be paired with a separate 5G modem, which takes up physical space and consumes more power. The upshot is that 4G flagship Android phones effectively no longer exist, and 2025 g phones tend to be pretty thick and heavy. The 765 isn't as powerful a chip like the 800 or a more efficient design. 
LG's bet is that by sacrificing a little bit of top-end performance, you'll get a sleeker phone that'll still work well with new 5G networks. The first time you pick up the Velvet, you'll understand that LG really did go all in on that bet. This is by far the most attractive phone that LG has made in many years, maybe ever. It's beautifully crafted from top to bottom, with a strong sense of balance in its curves and lines. Next to most other 2020 Android flagships, its 7.9mm thick frame feels like something from the future. Or from the recent past of just a few years ago, when many Android phones were pushing the limits of thin designs. I appreciate, though, that this may not show up all that well in photos, particularly since LG sent us this boring Aurora Grey fingerprint magnet version. This is the kind of phone you have to hold in your hand to understand the appeal. The symmetrically curved glass on the front and back isn't strictly new, for example, but it adds to the sensation of thinness. While I would not necessarily say LG is breaking new ground here, it's refreshing in the context of today's high-end phones, part of LG's pre-launch hype for the Velvet. There's one big camera lens at the top, then two smaller lenses and a flash below that evoke dripping water. It does look cool and it's refreshing not to have a huge camera bump, but all things considered, I think I'd rather have a better camera setup. While the Velvet's 48-megapixel main camera that turns in decent photos most of the time, it often suffers from over-sharpening, and it isn't competitive in low-light. Here are a few comparisons with the iPhone 11, which is one of the better cameras in this price segment. This is still very much a big phone, however, so don't go expecting the modest specs to allow for a breakthrough in portability. The Velvet has a 6.8-inch 1080p curved OLED screen with a selfie camera notch and slim bezels on the top and bottom. The top edge is a little thicker than what you'll find on other phones, but it balances out the chin on the bottom. Although the screen itself looks great, it has a couple of issues. It only runs at 60Hz, which puts it out of step with basically every other premium Android phone this year. I also found that the in-screen fingerprint sensor was slow and unrelers now, often requiring a second or third press to authenticate. The recorder which has plenty of features at the heart of the LG Velvet is a Snapdragon 765G chipset, is one of the most powerful mid-range chips available. Right now it supports conductivity to 5G networks, performance is great for mid-range. We didn't see any thermal throttling and our testing graphics performance is understandably less than a true flagship. Though nets were taking into consideration for this price you can get a phone with a Snapdragon 855 Plus or even an 865 Yashi Velvet has a 4300 million hour battery pretty typical for modern phone, and battery life is decent, but nothing outstanding. The phone scored an endurance rating of 79 hours non-proprietary battery support for 25 watt charging, but the Velvet comes with a 16 watts charger in the box, with the charging speed is in fact, we were able to go from 0 to 33% in half an hour, which has some higher capacity charges too with not much improvement, there is support for wireless charging, which maxes out at around 9 or 10 watts. It works with the dual screen accessory attached to it. If you need to charge this in the dual screen case, should use the provided magnetic adapter Yashi Velvet has a triple camera setup, rather than the four cameras we see on most phones these days, is a 48 megapixel quad bear main and 8 megapixel ultra wide angle cam, and a 5 megapixel depth sensor. 12 megapixel photos taken with the main camera overall quite pleasing. Colors are nice and punchy, and there's plenty of contrast detail is good to know some noise is visible if you look closely, you can opt to shoot in the 48 megapixel mode, which will give you some extra detail. If you have enough light. It comes at the expense of a decrease in dynamic range and color saturation, as well as a larger file size portraits are taken with the main cam, and that sensor and these are decent, but not the best we've seen. As long as the backgrounds are too complex, you get good subject separation, but you do see some hazy outlines from time to time. LG didn't fit a telephoto camera on the Velvets, but there is a 2 times toggle and the viewfinder is just a crop, and upscale from the main cam is 12 months of photos is not half bad, but you do get more noise and some over sharpening. Compare those from the ultra-wide angle camera located to you get the good dynamic range and likable colors, but the photos are quite soft overall, and you can see some noise and color, fringe, and low-light photos from the main camera are detailed on the darker side, and are a bit noisy color reproduction is good, and dynamic range is fairly wide. If the auto HDR cakes at night mode is a bit tricky. You can always go into the net view mode, but the phone will decide if the light level is low enough to warrant the extra processing if and when it does engage. It is in the night and day difference. No pun intended. There is an improvement in the noise and extra sharpening. But you don't see much more detail in the shadows the ultra webcams. Low light shots are soft and lacking in detail, and colors look washed out to you can enable net view mode here, but we're not seeing huge improvement self is from the velvet are taken with a 16 megapixel front facing camp and in well lit situations. We really like these results is to know what a focus the images come out on the point.
if there's good enough light video can be recorded with the main camera and up to 4K at 30 FPS. This footage bought on. And there's plenty of contrast, the ultra webcam is limited to 1080p at 30 FPS. These clips have some extra pop in terms of colors. In contrast, the quality is overall okay, video civilization is available on the main cam even in 4K, and the ultra wide to the results are nicely smooth, with walking induced shake, ironed out almost completely, is also a steady cam mode at 1080p at 30 FPS, which works with both cameras, and gives you even more stable results, so that the LG velvet colorful and waterproof bill that's bound to turn some heads, decent Kerrville light display loud stereo speakers, nice self is and some great value with the bundled accessories. The trouble is, the extra goodies will be coming to everyone only for pre-orders in some markets like Europe, and the phone itself isn't cheap, the price tag of 650 euros, which puts it up against flagship killers from several grants, but the Velvet is just now, that same level performance wise or camera. What's this price the phone's only really worth recommending? If you're getting but wait for the price to go down or check out some alternatives. Please subscribe, like the video, comment thanks for watching see you on my next video one peace out.